Hi there, welcome to the Ivory Tower Collections. I've got a real quick video I wanted to make today because I found this rather interesting. Also, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the audio and the camera work on this. I'm actually doing this with my camera phone, um, not because it's better by any means, but because I have so much to kind of move around over to show this that uh, this was just a real easy way to do this. So there's probably not going to be very much editing done to this either. So we have a 7800 here that I've been working on uh, that I just put a UAV into. And thanks to a thread at Atari Age with another user, uh, another member there who had also been installing a UAV board, he was getting some weird flickering issues that he noticed with Pole Position 2 and with Ball Blazer and uh, was just asking for assistance, and I had stated that I had installed many of these and had never encountered this issue. But then it occurred to me that I wasn't sure that I'd actually ever tested Pole Position 2 or really Ball Blazer outright on most uh, 7800s that I've uh, modified or upgraded with UAV boards. And uh, so, you know, we made the usual suggestion, replace the UAV board, um, you know, try different TVs. The guy continued to have the same issue. In fact, he had gone through three different UAV boards and it was always just on that particular 7800 that was giving him issues. So, I decided to check it out for myself with another 7800. Now, he has a very early revision model 7800 that has the expansion port, and also it has the extra timing circuit, which has already been disabled on this unit, um, which is also missing on the earlier versions, but it really doesn't seem to matter. Here's the thing. I decided to take these games and test them for myself. So I actually have two different versions of, of uh, Pole Position 2. I've got the more common one that was released with the uh, 7800s when they came out originally in the uh, mid-late 80s. It's got the 87 copyright on it. I'm not sure if my phone's going to focus on that or not. Anyway, so yeah, this has the 87 copyright on it. And then I also have one of the really early versions. This one's label's about to fall off, so I've got to be careful with it. Uh, you'll notice that the labels are actually upside down on these. And uh, it's actually dated from 84. So this is one of the original release versions of the game. So I decided to pop this in to the 7800. There we go. Make sure it's in there. Uh, now, this is pretty Frankenstein together. I use these uh, harnesses that I put together for quickly checking S-video and for checking audio with RCAs and what have you. And then I've got a, uh, a power adapter cable. It's actually an old wire harness from another device um, that I then just have a couple leads clipped off and isolated uh, that I then plug into my bench power supply right there. So I've got my bench power supply. It's currently set to, probably can't tell, but it's set it just right at about 10 volts right now of output. And uh, okay, so I've got the cart plugged in. Let's power this on and see what we get. So far, so good. Seems normal. No problems there. Start up a quick game. Yeah, no problems. Everything seems to be working just fine with this. Okay, so then, let me take this card out. I then take the newer release version of Pole Position that came out with most 7800s, and I pop it into this one. Let's take a look and see what this one does. What on earth? So I'm sure you noticed that right immediately on the BIOS screen. I'm going to redo that again. It's got some weird garbage characters coming up. And at first I thought maybe there was something wrong with the cartridge. So I tested it on my daily driver 7800 and it did not do this. I also tested it on another test 7800 unit I have that's pretty badly banged up looking physically but works fine otherwise. And it also did not have issues. Now it's not doing it right now but occasionally after that will happen I will also see graphic anomalies along on the uh, on the test screens or on the uh, track selector screen where some of the track like the bottom edge of the track will be flickering in and out. Also it's not doing it now of course but occasionally I would see a brown graphic line come across. It didn't seem to affect the road or the white stripes marking the road but on the green grass I would have like this brown colored line that would just kind of show up every now and then. So it was very strange. I couldn't figure it out. But then I put in Ball Blazer. Yes, this is a Ball Blazer. <laughs> yeah, the pokey's gone. 
We don't ask such questions here. But even without the pokey, Ballblazer still works just fine. You just don't get any audio because it only used the pokey for the audio. But watch what Ballblazer does. More graphic corruption when it starts up. There's the Lucasfilm logo, a little bit more graphic corruption, and then check this out. That's interesting. The Ballblazer logo is actually looking normal this time. Occasionally that will be cut off on the bottom and it'll look like some garbage characters. Either way though, the rest of the game should do what I'm wanting to show anyway. So let's just watch and see what it does. See, it looks normal so far. What's going on with the score there a little bit? There's a little bit of flickering. Ah, there it is. Look at that. We've got some weird graphic corruption going on. Now, it could be argued, you could easily say, well, that's because you removed the pokey. It's doing something weird to the cartridge. Well, I tried an actual untainted ball blazer for the 7800, and it did the exact same thing. I mean, the exact same graphic corruption. Uh, no different. So, um, oh yeah, and then eventually it'll lock up the system. See, it just locked up. Nothing. So, yeah, I'm glad to have shown that. So the first thing I did was try changing out the video RAM chip um, that I thought might be related to it. Because here's the thing, I also tried several homebrew games and some other games, and they didn't exhibit any issues at all. I thought, well, that's weird. Why is it just these two? So I thought maybe they were using some sort of higher functionality. Um, but yeah, so changing out the video RAM didn't do any good. Changing out the Riot didn't do any good. Uh, I didn't mess with the Maria. I figured that was okay because the graphics, for the most part, were at least there and intact. And for like 90% of the games, it seems to be fine. And uh, so I thought maybe the CPU was to blame. So I actually swapped out the CPU just on a whim to see what would happen. This is actually the Sally out of a 5200 donor board I've got. And I popped it in. Now normally I would put, the, put these in sockets. Um, but when I did that, I continued to have issues with three different CPUs I tried in this thing. Three different 6502Cs. So I thought, well, maybe there's a problem with the socket. Maybe it's just not getting good connection. So here was the discovery. What I did in the process of this was I piggybacked another 6502 Sally chip on top of this one. And by the way, I actually did it with several of them. It didn't matter. I noticed that if I had two of them piggybacked on top of each other, the graphic corruption was gone. It was working fine. It wouldn't lock up during Ball Blazer's demo or anything. It was working great. And I'm like, well, that's weird. So I then took a breadboard, broke it out, had the uh, had a secondary Sally in it, and then I attached on top of the primary one on the board a socket, and I installed jumper wires back and forth. And basically through process of, of elimination of pulling each wire one by one until the graphic corruption came about, I discovered where the problem was. And it's actually... Pin 25 on the CPU. Turns out it wasn't the Sally at all, but pin 25 is address 15. It goes from the uh, uh, from the from the uh, CPU to pin 30 on the Maria, which you do see a little pin dot there. I did mark a little sharpie there. That in turn goes to pin one on the 74 SO5 or SO8 rather, and then in turn eventually ends up to pin 22 over on the BIOS chip, which would explain why I was seeing some corruption on the BIOS screen itself, which is fairly unusual. So in finding that out, I then discovered that if I just have a wire just soldered to pin 25, or if I solder it to pin 30, I would still get the corruption until I touched it, until I held onto it. And it didn't matter if I was touching the lead or like the actual exposed wire on the solder on the end of it, or if I just touched my fingers around the jacket insulation, the corruption would immediately disappear. Interesting. That meant that somehow uh, I was adding some additional capacitance into the system that was somehow cleaning and filtering what appears to be some sort of digital noise or just noise in general getting into address 15 from somewhere on the board. So then I took a look at the schematics. Now, this is page two of the newer 7800 schematics that were drawn up in uh, 2003. And specifically, we're looking at the section here related to the Sally, to the 6502C. And we go through and we go through and we finally find right here, pen 25, address 15, we trace it, we trace it down. This is just a, a, this is a combined schematic showing that all these addresses basically have their own lines going to other various places. And uh, we look here, and I don't see A15 mentioned anywhere on the 6116s. Those are the video RAMs, so I didn't even need to mess with that. 
But if we take a look and we watch it and we go over here, here's the, uh, what is this, the 2332? Yes, yeah, so this is the BIOS chip. And there's no address 15 here, but you will notice it listed right here by itself, and it shows the connection that goes off into pin 1 on the 74S08, which we expect. And I was able to verify that with continuity. So there was no broken traces anywhere from the Sally to the... Oh, and by the way, you don't see pin 30's connection to the Maria. That jumps off over here where it shows uh, various things with A0 to A15 and D0 to D, uh, what is that, D7. Uh, that's on another page that shows the connections to the Maria, but it, it was all measuring out continuity-wise, no problems. Um, and then you'll see that it also attaches here to pin 22 on the BIOS, and all of that was checking out. But under my finger was something else. A capacitor? Huh? It doesn't have an official label, it just says CA. And it shows a 47 picofarad that's attached off of A15 to ground. And apparently it's nonpolar. Hence why it's just got the two parallel lines. So I thought, well, that's weird. Let me take a look for that. And sure enough, it would kind of make sense because, again, when I was touching it with my fingers, the issue would go away, indicating I was adding some capacitance to the data line. So I then took my meter and took another board I've got that's almost stripped bare, which makes it easier for me to find the labels for things, and could never find a capacitor directly tied off of A15 anywhere in that signal. Basically, it was going straight from pin 25 to here, to pin 30, to pin 1, straight to pin 22, and then basically didn't go anywhere else beyond that point. I think there is an, I think there is an additional line for it that goes to the expansion port, but again, that was never used. But again, I did not find a capacitor anywhere, so I thought, well, let's try adding one. So that's what I did. So let me uh, take all this apart real quick. And, uh, and I'll flip this over and I'll show you what, uh, what I did. So be right back. Okay, we're now looking at the bottom of this particular 7800 board. And particularly right here, this is where the, uh, the bottom pins are of the Maria. And uh, right here, sorry, this is the Maria. And right here is the uh, 6502C, the Sally, which you can see I haven't cleaned up my flux off of here yet. Because again, I was troubleshooting this and trying different things and putting in sockets and removing sockets when I thought they weren't making good connection. But right here, I have a capacitor. And I have purposely disconnected it for the time being to show you those graphic anomalies that I was getting. So this is just a 100 nanofarad cap. It was really about the smallest thing I had on hand. And, uh, and I've got it attached off of pin 30 here off of the Maria and uh, just got it floating on the other side. It's not actually attached to the ground. I'm not sure if my camera will show that or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to solder that back in place and uh, we'll take a look and see what happens. Now, the reality is I could have attached this cap anywhere. I just figured there was plenty of space here. There's this large ground trace right here along the uh, on the underside of the Mar of the uh, Maria chip. So I just scraped off a little of the um, substrate off the top of it or the uh, solder mask off the top of it to uh, to solder this down to ground. So uh, yeah. Anyway. It was just the closest place I could see, and I'm like, hey, this is a quick run. Let's see what happens. So, yeah, I'm going to get the solder back into place and show you the results. All right, so I've now got that capacitor soldered back down to the ground. You can see that. Easy enough. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the board back over and uh, show you what we get now. All right, so I've got that capacitor soldered on underneath the Maria off of pin 30 to ground. And uh, let's see, what we'll do first is we'll get the original pole position 2 cartridge from 1984. Again, it didn't have any issues before, but we want to just go through the same testing we did before to make sure everything's still good. Okay, still looks fine, no issues there. Right. So it seems to be working okay. Yeah, I didn't gear it up. I'm still in low speed. Anyway, we get the idea. Alright, so now let's take this out. And let's put in the newer released pole position 2, or newer labeled release, but there's obviously some difference with the game. Now remember, this one had graphic anomalies as soon as we had the BIOS screen even come up. So here we go, powering it on. Hmm. No graphic issues. That looks normal. Seems to play okay. Hmm. 
Yep. So now the real test. The game that was showing us the most graphical issues, which of course was Ball Blazer. So let me put this Ball Blazer back in here. There we are. Power it on. Okay, no graphic corruption on the screen. And we got the little shiny spec without the weird line showing up that time, like we did previous. The Ball Blazer logo looks okay, but again, occasionally that would come in screwed up before. I apologize, I couldn't show that earlier. I'll focus on that a little bit better. Looks normal so far. We'll let the demo mode start. Look at that. There's no graphic corruption. Everything looks exactly the way it should. The ball sprite is the proper color. It's not that weird purple pink color it was showing up before and it doesn't have the weird uh, quarter graphic that was appearing uh, underneath it off to the lower uh, right. And uh, the rotofoil sprites and the play field look correct. We don't have any graphic glitching occurring there either. And most importantly, as I have let this thing run like this for well over an hour, just in the demo mode, doing its different things, and it never locked up. Not once. So, yeah, uh, that was kind of a tricky one. Um, it would appear that at some point in time in the later revision of the schematics, possibly in a uh, later revision of the board that uh, I've just never noticed before, that a small capacitor was added to help filter out some sort of uh, AC or something to that effect that was obviously affecting address 15 uh, through the CPU and the Maria and through the rest of the system that would occasionally cause these glitches and potentially lock up some consoles. And yes, I did try to reattach the extra timing circuit uh, before I did all that to see if that was somehow related and it made no difference whatsoever. The system still had the graphic issues and it still locked up just like before. So yeah, just a quick little troubleshooting, uh, additional little troubleshooting tip for a 7800. If you got some weird graphic corruption that's similar to what you saw there, uh, it could be one of the address lines requiring some sort of extra capacitance uh, to filter out some sort of junk, obviously, that's causing an issue. And um, as far as I can tell, I don't know, I've only, I only did it with the cover off. So it's also possible that maybe those anomalies don't show up once you have the RF shield and everything in place, because maybe that filters out whatever's causing the interference. But... In any event, adding, a, in this case, a small 100 nanofarad ceramic cap off the address line seemed to uh, clear up the issue and get rid of the unwanted noise. So, thanks. Check you guys out later.